Have you ever wondered how you go from a piece of rough to a perfectly polished diamond? We've come to Antwerp to have a look at the process in more detail. First of all, the diamonds need to be sorted into parcels. The stones, you are sorting the, the, the stones according to the, the size of the stone and then the, the shape and the clarity and the colour of the stones. These are the main uh, criteria. When the diamonds are being sorted for shape, the diamond sorters are not looking yet for stones to be either round brilliant or princess cut, but are instead looking for makeable stones or sawable stones. A makeable stone is the name given to diamonds whose shape lends itself to having one large diamond cut from it. Sawable stones, on the other hand, will be cut in half in order to create two smaller diamonds. Once the rough has been sorted, the parcels are handed over to the head of polishing. It's now their job to assess each rough diamond individually and to create a cutting plan which details exactly the size and angle of every facet for the diamond. Each diamond is first scanned into a computer using a sound machine and then, using a sophisticated piece of computer software, the different cutting options can be analysed. This is a crucial stage in assessing how beautiful the diamond will ultimately look. The polishing company can decide to retain a greater proportion of the original carat weight of the diamond, perhaps by making the diamond slightly deeper or slightly taller. In this case, the diamond will weigh more, but as the position of the facets are less than optimal, they won't reflect the light as well, resulting in less sparkle and life from the stone. Once the cutting option has been confirmed, the diamond is then handed to the first polisher, who puts the initial eight facets on the diamond, four in the pavilion and four on the crown, which is on the top of the stone. During this process, the diamond is secured in a special bracket, which holds a diamond at an exact angle. It's lowered onto a turntable which is covered in a diamond paste that slowly polishes away the material from the rough diamond. The next stage in the process is to make the diamond round. This is done using a bruting machine. Two diamonds are turned against each other to make the diamond round in shape. This process leaves a, a matte-like finish on the girdle of the diamond. The girdle can be left in this form which is called a bruter girdle, or a series of small facets can be polished onto the girdle, giving a faceted girdle. Now that the diamond has its basic shape, it's taken to the next polishing stage, where the main pavilion and crown facets are polished on. It's important that each facet is polished to be in line with the original cutting plan produced by the head of polishing. Once the diamond has been polished, every single facet needs to be carefully checked. First, this is done using a laser scanner, and then by a professional gemologist. Every stone uh, have uh, 57 facets at the brilliant cut, and I check them for uh, every facet three or four times. It means uh, every stone uh, takes a lot of time. At this stage, the polishing company will be able to predict with a high degree of accuracy the grade that the diamond will ultimately achieve. It's now ready to be sent to the grade and lab to be assessed.